This video is sponsored by Incognate. With the advent of smartphones, computers, virtual reality, and now AI applications like ChatGPT and MidJourney, we're all finally starting to learn that science fiction has really just been science prediction all along. And nothing is more at the center of that than the advancement of artificial intelligence. So I thought we could look at the levels of AI, starting from basic code all the way up to its potential and perhaps frightening future. Level 1. Clippy. At the lowest level of artificial intelligence, we have Clippy. This little guy is a rules-based system, or what we're familiar with as basic computer script. Scripts are essentially commands that say, if this happens, do that. If that happens, do this. If you're not familiar with Clippy, good for you, because don't let his cute little magic carpet fool you, he's actually deranged. If Clippy were a person, he'd walk up to you unannounced and say, you look like you're trying to be pretty. You'd be prettier if you smiled more. Then regardless of your response, his next line in the script was always, you're welcome, would you like more tips? This level of artificial intelligence is of course not scary at all, it in fact makes you stupider for having interacted with it. Level 2. A bit smarter than Clippy, but still at a low level of artificial intelligence, we have Reddit top comments. While Reddit top comments are made by humans, comments they get upvoted are not upvoted because they're correct, but because they sound correct. If you don't know about a certain subject, you'll be reading top comments all day thinking you're learning a lot, until you click their profile and realize you're taking legal advice from a 17-year-old Minecraft streamer. This phenomenon is caused by how Reddit highlights posts and articles, which is based on the second stage of artificial intelligence, algorithms. While algorithms are still forms of rules-based systems, many are very powerful, and long before man feared artificial intelligence, he blamed algorithms for his failures. If you lost money on Bitcoin, algorithms. No YouTube views, algorithms. Can't solve a Rubik's Cube, algorithms. Trash teammates in Counter-Strike, also algorithms. While most women would look at a guy and say, you weren't defeated by an algorithm, you're just not very good at your hobby. The reality is if a guy's been defeated by an algorithm, a woman wouldn't be looking at him in the first place. Level 3. Whatever they're doing at Boston Dynamics. While we all used to laugh at the goofy robots Boston Dynamics was making, suddenly in the last few years everyone went from laughing to fundamentally being on the side of the machines. While Boston Dynamics still uses a lot of regular algorithms, one reason for this massive amount of progress in such a short amount of time was for advancements in level 3 artificial intelligence, which is machine learning. This means that instead of always getting the same output from a given input, the output is remembered, integrated into the software, and a new, more efficient outcome occurs next time. Level 4. Generative AI here we are at the present day, where we're all familiar with applications like ChatGPT and MidJourney, and this is where AI begins to finally mimic human intelligence, and in many cases exceeds it as well. For example, using an image generator, here I use the prompt, futuristic affordable city housing, and it looks exactly how I imagined it. Here I asked it, loser of the 2024 federal election, and it knew right away. I even asked it for average casually explained subscriber, and I'm sure most of us thought we were looking into a mirror. Many people fear that this generation of AI is going to take everyone's jobs in the next 10 years. But AI has taken tens of thousands of jobs already, you just haven't noticed. For example, it's now impossible to tell whether the supermodel you're talking to on Tinder is an artificial intelligence or an actual Indian man. The thing is, every time a new groundbreaking technology comes along, everyone thinks it's going to take all the jobs, which it does, but then it creates new ones that didn't exist before. The Industrial Revolution got rid of the farmers, but created jobs in manufacturing. The internet's killed a huge part of the publishing industry, but created jobs in programming and social media. And while AI is eventually going to come for us all, currently these new tools really only have practical application at image creation and writing, meaning it's only the people in the creative arts that are going to be unemployed. So no change, really. Level 5. Ana de Armas and Blade Runner. This is the level where artificial intelligence reaches a point where it's essentially analogous to our own intelligence. It can collect and remember sensory data, and if it has the right hardware, it's able to interact with and manipulate the environment just like a human. Because of this, human-level intelligence can be applied to specialized machines and be used for nearly everything. For this reason, some people believe it's extremely dangerous, while others see nothing but potential. I personally am pretty optimistic because all you have to do is look how it plays out in the movies. Take Blade Runner as an example. Lonely guy lives in dystopian future, climate change has ravaged the world, goes on an adventure, loses sexy AI robot girlfriend, doesn't fix anything. Now look what happens when you use an artificial general intelligence robot as the protagonist instead. Lonely guy lives in dystopian future, climate change has ravaged the world, goes on an adventure, gets a sexy AI robot girlfriend way out of his league, literally saves the earth. Even if we screw up the whole planet, if we could just make one Wally, we're in good hands. Level 6. Artificial Superintelligence and Cybernetic Enhancement 
One of my biggest disappointments when I was a teenager was when I first read the term trans person because I thought, finally, I don't have to be a person anymore. While it turns out I'll have to wait to get my it that pronouns, I still long for our cybernetic future where we can be half robot, half human, and I can have an AI chip connected to my brain for enhanced function. Then people like my dad will say, why would you want an artificial super intelligence implanted in your brain? What's wrong with being a natural human? And I'd say, hmm, I'd have to think. If you didn't get that one, it's a sign you need the implant. Level seven, the singularity. The highest level of AI in the ultimate event horizon is known as the singularity, which is when an artificial superintelligence is able to iteratively improve upon itself at a runaway exponential rate, and what happens next is completely beyond our own speculation. The example that scientists have given to describe the singularity is to think of a gorilla trying to figure out what it would be like to be a human. Ask a gorilla what it thinks about, and it would say, all I think about is sex and what food I'm going to eat next. Whereas a human can also have anxiety. It's possible that it could allow far off science fiction ideas to become real, such as being able to upload our consciousness to a single system and we all become one machine human super hybrid. It might extend our reach throughout the galaxy, or perhaps it will see humans as an inferior species and enslave or annihilate us all. A lot of people are very frightened by what this may mean, but personally, I've hedged my bets. Either AI fails to reach a runaway point and our lives are just massively improved, or the dystopia becomes absolutely real, but my NVIDIA calls are deep in the money. Level 8 There is one final step to the whole picture, which is the theory that what the singularity becomes was set in motion from the beginning of time, like a seed growing into a tree, because that's what the universe itself is, and what we're experiencing is analogous to some sort of video game or synthetic dream. And at its core, the whole universe is a single superstructure or intelligence acting itself out, and our little lives are a piece of that. While some call that greater concept God, others call it a simulation, and the rest of us just call it about 7.4 on IMDb. And while there isn't any great evidence for or against such a theory, if you look around you, you can tell from their behavior that you are in fact surrounded by NPCs. Now, while you might be sitting there thinking, wait, am I, am I just a, a simulation? You don't need to worry, because you're the only real one. It's the rest of us who are part of the hologram and want you to reveal your secrets. Which is why you should consider today's sponsor, Incogni, which acts on your behalf to request your personal data, including things like your address and phone number, be removed from data brokers who've acquired your personal information through your internet and subscription use, but will remove it upon request. The problem is this will likely take dozens if not hundreds of hours for you to do manually, and since the last time I talked about Incogni on this channel, it's performed the equivalent of 21 hours of work requesting the removal of my data, despite the fact that I'm Canadian. So sadly, no one really wants to track me in the first place, even though that hurts my feelings. While this means that sadly there won't be any little cyborg Jamie clones running around in the near future, it does mean I far more rarely get spam callers, scammers, and risk my information being sold or falling to the wrong hands. Incogni takes literally less than one minute to go from web page landing to sign up to running the service and gives you an easy to read dashboard of all the successful removals, active processes, and requests sent. If you'd like to give it a try, the first 100 people to use the code casually at the link below will get 60% off Incogni. Thank you.